Welcome back. Um, Mr. Benite, you were the last, you were talking and you were talking about, you mentioned education. Quality education. Quality education. Mm -hmm. Is that enough to affect the, uh, what, what, what do, philosophy, the philosophy of the Nigerian? Because right now we're talking about yeah. the mindset of that the Nigerian. Both young and old. Yeah. Especially in these days when we're talking about the young, not too young to run. The young want to come in. Nigeria 50, we keep saying it's enough. The old have disappointed us. No, it's time for the youth to take over. Do we have that kind of preparation? You know, there's something that I believe that uh, Pastor Ladi will bring into it the national discourse, which is this issue of engineering. The very curriculum that we've had, even from the 60s, mm. is abnormal. It cannot create the true Nigerian. Mm -hmm. The curriculum we use is a public curriculum that creates servants. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. create the king. Even in, U in UK, where the princes are raised, they are raised different from the, what they call the commoners. Mm -hmm. The princes are given military capacity, intellectual capacity, strategic studies. So the curriculum that we have, because when we say education, it has to be quality. quality. There are three parts of, uh, of a sphere that deals with the philosophy of the individual at the family level, which is almost what we call amora, meaning that it's affected by the conditions of the society. But two basically have the force of power to create philosophy is religion and education. education. And so when you form a curriculum that has no basis of creating the Nigerian you dream of, mm. because curriculum is like a machine mm. that you put in a, it's like a mode, mode that you put in the machine and create the design of the cup. Whether you want it square, you want it round, mm -hmm. you want it tall, you and want the it same small. One keeps so you haven't created the curriculum for the Nigerian. Mm. There are no Afrocentric solutions that mm. we have sat down to debate what kind of curriculum we have. I was in a meeting yesterday and I, we were, some Africans were around and I said, do you know we don't even have what we call African studies for our children to know that there's a country called Burundi, there's another country called Rwanda, there's a country called Botswana, there's a country, we know United Kingdom, we know Canada, mm. we know, United we States. need to create what we want. Mm. We need to deconstruct first, mm -hmm. analyze critically, this does not match with our future. Mm. That does not match, we throw it into the trash. Mm. We remind Britain, if we have to get to the Geneva court to do it, and remind every colonial master that independence required that the people think independently. It becomes a negotiation. If we want to work with you, Britain, look at what Rwanda did. They threw France out of the equation because France was not to our advantage mm. and embraced Britain. So this is the new partner. I believe Nigeria has not made those decisions. Mm. And there's a generation coming that will make those decisions mm. to sit down and say, we are going to create our philosophy how does the Nigerian think? The, the national anthem says, Arise, O compatriot, Nigeria Kolobi, to serve your fatherland. What does that mean? Mm. What does it mean to serve the fatherland? Does the average child who comes out of school understand that? And that's why a young man today is going to be big overnight because he does not understand process of production, process of greatness. He thinks that greatness is an entitlement. You acquire it, take it by force. Because even in school, he was not taught. We will never get the Nigeria of our dream until we sit down and deconstruct and reconstruct and begin to create the image of a Nigerian. It's an image for any, every country. You meet an American, you meet an American. It's an image. It was designed. But we collected curriculum from our from masters. UK. And mm. we did not sit down and say, uh-uh. Do you know that Lin Kuan Yi decided to look at all the curriculum globally? and decide to choose what he wanted. He created a mix For his country. Today they are the number one in mathematics, mm -hmm. which is the bedrock for engineering, innovation, creativity. When a certain group of people within his country, which were predominantly the Muslim aspect of the country, were not doing well, he called for a referendum. Mm -hmm. what are you, why are you not doing well? What are the challenges within your community? They found that the children after school, they are playing. The parents allowed them to go here. He said, no, no. It's time to put the student back on track. So wait, wait, it wasn't the question of, the, you said a certain aspect. Yes. So the Muslim community wasn't doing it. call them say, yes. we need, to, we get need to get it right. It's about the nation. It's about the nation, not about anything. You guys, what is happening within the community? Because you see, whether you like it or not, you must protect philosophy. How people think must be forcefully protected. Because whether you like it at the northern level, where you have all the rankadedi and the bigmanism, 
my father was, he, he was from Central North. I knew how big my father looked in the eyes of people. I had to ask my dad one day, I said, you're not God, though. The way people are worshipping you, it doesn't look right. How do you look so big and nobody's like you? You've not created your own image. Mm. And you look at me, you naughty girl. What is wrong with you? I said, no. That desire that I'm the only one, nobody else. So everybody will do rank and daddy. Everybody say, oh, bye, oh, bye, talk, bye. It cannot continue. There must be a people that will say, we will not take this anymore. Whether Muslim, Christian, Israel, we're Nigerians. We want a Nigeria of a dream. Then we can have mental Africa. But like he said, I like what he said, that Nigeria is that crucible that God is beginning to look at and say, if I build Nigeria, I will build Africa. But okay. we have to create that curriculum. Okay. Now, Pastor. You want to know? Oh, already. Oh. <laughs> because I, I just thought that I needed to bring in the matter of Nigeria now being the poorest nation yes. on earth. 58 years of independence, and I remember independence... I was little, but I still recall the hope and everything and how Nigerians would leave our shores when there were no universities in this country, yeah. go abroad, study, and they were always in a hurry to come back yeah. to build this nation. Yeah. And yet we find ourselves at the bottom of the ladder as the poorest nation on earth 58 years after independence. Please talk to that. Okay, definitely what we need to understand here is that Nigeria is not the poorest nation on the earth. Okay. We have entered what I call a global one chance. The Nigerian knows what a one chance means. <laughs> now the truth is this. Uh, there is something we need to understand. That all the nations of Africa put together, 54 nations of Africa, 10 dependent territories put together, have consistently over the past few decades contributed only two and a half percent of the global GDP. Consistently, decade after decade, the share of all African nations put together, Nigeria, all the billionaires of Nigeria with Ghana, with South Africa, all our share of global trade has consistently been less than three percent. And yet, we export, it is said that about 60-something percent of the raw materials that runs the world it's comes from out of Africa. So this tells you something. There is a program. You see, I, I've always asked myself, because people talk about, I mean, I, I say if I meet Okonji a while, and these are the questions I want to ask people like them, mm -hmm. because they keep comparing that uh, this economist, this government didn't do this, that is there anything you could have done in your time that would bring Nigeria's GDP to contribute... Uh, 7% of the global because it means to me that it's just a storm in the teacup most of the measures you people are palliatives that you people are talking about because there's a fundamental program now there are three things I think I need to bring into play here just to tidy up this whole thing quickly one, yes mm. one we will take from a man like W.B. E.B. Du Bois who wrote a book yes. in 1906 who said listen there's this passionate belief that God between man and cattle created a tashom quid and called him the African. What is the Tashom Quid? Something that is related to both man and cattle, but is neither man nor cattle. Nor cattle. And that's the philosophy, and she mentioned education. The second African-American to go to Harvard for a college degree wrote a book, The Miseducation yes. of the Negro. So there's a way you can program an education, mm -hmm. put it in the enculturation program of a nation, yes. they will continually turn out chaos. Now, the second thing we must learn must be from, uh, I believe we can learn from Dubai, Sheikh Maktoum wrote yeah. a book. He said, look, to build a prosperous nation is not something you do overnight. Mm -mm. And it's not something that you go by fire brigade. Yeah. He says, once you start it, you need to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You need to be on your toes. You can't afford to sleep for one day. And I guess at least we can see Dubai. We see what has come out of it. Mm. Thirdly, let us learn from America. I think America yes. does Nigeria an injustice. It's the nation that has the closest history to Nigeria. They were yeah. colonized too. They had all these problems. Yes. They solved it. But they never tell us. Oh. They keep telling us, go for democracy, go for democracy. What Tafar Balewa called eternal truth is what they call undeniable Bible truth, truth. self-evident yes. truth. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all oh, men I are created equal. That's what they built their nation upon. Okay. In fact, founding fathers of America oh, so, said, so we have to get a one democracy, ten seconds from you and then we'll go. And the land. Ten seconds in no, closing. Should we, should we be celebrating okay. on Monday? No. Okay. Celebrating what? Okay. Ten seconds. 
I will be celebrating on Monday because I can see a right. horizon. Okay. okay. There's okay. light at the end There's of the tunnel. There's light and it will happen. That's what we should celebrate. Yes. Okay. On behalf of Africa. Yes. So, uh, one person says no celebration. Two <laughs> say there's light at the end of the tunnel. But really, we should be we, warning. We, lost we have yes, been chatting so with um, Mrs. Juliet Benitier of the Institute for National Transformation. Um, mm. uh, retired Captain Umar Ali, a security expert, as well as Pastor Ladi Thompson, a security consultant. Thank you all very much Thank you. for this very vibrant yeah. and interesting segment. Sunrise will return in just a moment with another interesting conversation. Please join us.